If you're new to easing in After Effects, then this tutorial is for you because we're going to cover everything you need to know to use the graph editor like a pro. And I'm going to share some useful tricks to help level up your easing. But first, we need to talk about timing and spacing. And these are concepts you may have come across before in books like the Animator Survival Kit. So timing is about the different beats of an action and spacing is about the gaps between drawings. Then in After Effects you can think of timing as the distance between your keyframes and spacing as your easing. The way you adjust these two variables will drastically change the way your animation feels. And it's what breathes life into your animation and gives it character. So I've set up this composition to show you how spacing works in After Effects. So we have a linear animation to start, but look at what happens when we easy ease these keyframes and then adjust the easing in the graph editor. You'll see that the spacing changes even though our timing, the distance between our keyframes, remains the same. Interesting, right? And what's good about understanding these concepts is that you'll start to think about your animation more like a frame-by-frame -frame animator. And I would highly encourage you to do so, because from what I've seen and experienced, thinking this way ends up improving your animation. Easing in After Effects is also about believability. When animating objects, we want them to feel like whatever they are. So for example, a beach ball will have a lighter bounce than a bowling ball. As animators, it's our job to figure out what our object is made of or decide what kind of characteristics it has so that our easing reflects these qualities. But before we get too abstract about it, let's jump into some practical examples in After Effects and I can show you some of the tricks I've picked up over the years. So get ready because we're about to make the graph editor our bitch. And the first thing we're going to cover is how to make an object feel like it's falling correctly and to create more impact when that object lands on the ground or hits something. So let's add in two position keyframes, 10 frames apart. And now let's lift up the square to outside the canvas. The first thing we want to think about here is the falling. So because gravity exists, objects pick up speed as they fall, but these keyframes are linear, so the speed will be constant. Just look at this animation. So I have a trick to fix this. Let's select our first keyframe and get into the graph editor. Now we can just drag down the keyframe and add some easing to the graph. And now you can see we're getting more of an accelerated fall. But now let's make it land with more impact. So let's add another keyframe, about three frames ahead of our second keyframe. Now with our second keyframe selected, let's nudge our square down with our down arrow to create a slight overshoot. Let's easy ease the last keyframe and inside the graph editor, add a bit of easing on the right. And look how much more solid and lifelike our object feels, like it has weight to it. Now, just a quick note here, since our object is only falling along the y-axis, we could also have separated the dimensions, which you do by right-clicking position and hitting separate dimensions. And here is the same set of keyframes on just the y-axis so that we can focus on the easing. Separating dimensions allows us to use the value graph for our easing, and once you start to understand the value graph, it can sometimes be a bit more intuitive and you have greater control over your easing. Now in the graph editor, let's select the value graph then select our first and last keyframes and easy ease them with F9. Let's change the shape of the graph with our first handle so that it has less of a curve because we want it to feel like it was already moving outside of the comp. So something like this. You'll notice there's a weird hump to the left of our middle keyframe and it looks like the graph is decelerating just before it hits the ground. Gravity would not let that happen. And we also know we want the middle keyframe to hit hard. So let's use our convert vertex tool to add handles to this and break the first handle so that we can remove that deceleration in the graph. Lastly, we just need to increase the easing on the last keyframe and make any final tweaks to our handles. And now we have something similar to our first animation with the speed graph. Now I want us to do some more work with the value graph. So here is a new shape with the anchor point on the left so we can rotate it like this. Now let's create a quick little animation to practice with. So here is an animation with linear keyframes where we have an anticipation and then a fast action before settling back into the original position. Take note of the timing, which as you now know, is the spacing between these keyframes. But now let's jump into the graph editor and change to our value graph because I want you to see how it looks when the graph is linear. It's a hard edged zigzag. And in real life, nothing really moves like this. It's also worth taking note of the invisible middle line here at zero on the graph. When we rotate upwards, we are getting into a negative value on our rotation, so the graph goes down. And of course, the opposite is true for our third keyframe. 
We can also move these up and down in the graph and the values will change. This is important to note when we start adding curves. So let's select all the keyframes, add an easy ease and observe what happens to the graph. We're starting to get those curves I was talking about. And perhaps you're starting to see why this can actually be a bit more of an intuitive graph for easing. Now we can exaggerate our curve on the second keyframe to increase the easing. And just keep tweaking these handles until we get something that feels the way we want it to. So something like this. And now for some 200 IQ shit. If we pull up the handle on our first keyframe so that the curve goes above the zero line, we can add a quick anticipation to our anticipation. And take a look at that. This applies at any point in the curve. So you could also break the second curve and pull the handles out again to something like this and you'll get a slightly different result. And just for fun, let's take a look at the speed graph for the same animation. Let's be honest, this is not a graph you would have likely created by working with the speed graph. Before we move on, if you've gotten any value graph out of this tutorial so far, let me know by hitting that like button. The next thing we're going to cover is overshoots. So here is a circle and let's drop in two scale keyframes 10 seconds apart and change the first keyframe to zero to create a simple scale animation. Now let's go four frames ahead and add another scale keyframe. Then on the second keyframe, we can change the value to 110 and easy ease all the keyframes. And because of how well set up the timing is, this already looks pretty good. But with the easing, we can drastically change how this feels. So in the speed graph, we could increase the easing on the first and last keyframes so that the overshoot hits really hard and bounces back. And this kind of looks like a pumping speaker. Or let's do the exact opposite by resetting the easing and then adding stronger easing on either side of the middle keyframe. And this feels very different. For the last example, let's reset and go into the value graph. And now let's change the handle on the first keyframe so that there is no easing at the start and it comes on very quickly. And to make this feel right, we're also going to change the timing of the second keyframe and adjust the handles slightly like this. And look at the results. Also, for fun, we can adjust the last keyframe's handle, like this, and now this gives us the feeling that the circle is locking into place, which is pretty interesting. So you may be starting to notice how much flexibility you have once you start working with the graph editor, so let's continue with an elastic overshoot animation. And with elastic style easing, you're trying to create a graph that looks like this. So with the same circle, let's reset the easing and go into the value graph. And before we move on, let's just make the first overshoot 120. Now let's add a bunch of keyframes, six frames apart. Now we just need to lift these frames up and down in a decaying fashion so that the values get smaller and smaller until the last keyframe, like this. Let's select them all and easy ease them to smooth out the graph and look at what we've made. And of course, the same concept applies to rotation as well. And to be honest, this is probably a better application of this technique than the scale version. But in case it wasn't obvious, I don't want you getting all excited about this wobbly scale animation, because next thing you know, you're animating every object in your entire scene like this. And we've all seen that before and it's dog shit. You're better than that. Moving on, there is a frame by frame technique for beginners to practice animation. And Alex Grigg talks about it in this video. But essentially, the idea is to start with a circle and animate it moving around while trying to make it as interesting as possible and paying attention to where it slows down and speeds up. And this is essentially about practicing easing. And what's quite interesting is that this is fairly simple when drawing by hand, but it's actually quite difficult to achieve in After Effects. But luckily, I'm here to show you how we can go about it. And in doing so, we're also gonna learn some cool shit about keyframes. For starters, we have a small circle. Now let's grab our pen tool and start drawing a cool path for our shape to follow. And if you don't know why I'm doing it this way, it's probably gonna blow your mind. So let's refine the path a bit, making sure that it has curves in all the right places and they are smooth and sensual, like your favorite anime girl. And now let's open up the shape layer to our path and add a keyframe. Now let's copy this keyframe with Ctrl C. Now we can click on the position of our circle and paste this keyframe with Ctrl V and boom, we have turned the path into position keyframes and each path point has become a new keyframe. And this brings us to a new type of keyframe, roving keyframes. And you'll see them in the middle. They've become round and what After Effects is doing is automatically spacing the keyframes so that the object animates smoothly along this path. 
Let's play this so you can see what I mean. And you can drag the right keyframe in to make this animation faster or pull it out to make the animation slower. You can add easing on either side and everything will adjust accordingly. To add or remove roving keyframes, you can select the middle keyframes, right click and click rove across time. And now we can get into adding some spice to this movement. So let's select all the keyframes and add an easy ease. This will obviously look like trash, but we've only just started. So let's jump into the graph editor. And since it doesn't make sense to separate our dimensions, we'll be using the speed graph. And now we're gonna focus on the first few keyframes. So for starters, let's grab the second keyframe and start dragging it up. And if the two sides are separating, you just need to double click on the keyframe and make sure this checkbox is ticked. And now we're just going to increase the easing around the keyframe and play around with the height of the keyframe. So the lower the keyframe, the closer the ball will come to a halt and the higher up the keyframe, the opposite is true. So by lifting up the keyframe and adding strong ease on either side, you can see our circle now has this satisfying hang time. Now for our third and fourth keyframes, it'll be nice if it actually shot right through so we can add some ease at the later keyframe. So to do that, we can just select the next two keyframes and right click to turn them into roving keyframes again. Now let's lift up the following keyframe and mess around with the easing some more and keep doing that until we get something we're happy with, like this. And then we can just rinse and repeat these steps with the next keyframes by lifting them up or changing them into roving keyframes as necessary and just messing around with the easing until we get something satisfying and sensual. Now as a saucy bonus, I want to show you another way to do this that will knock your socks off. Or keep them on, if that's what you're into. So let's reset this whole animation into our roving keyframe version, pre-compose our layer and then enable time remapping. Now we can just add a keyframe at the start and then keep adding keyframes at any point we want to slow down along the animation. So this way we aren't confined to our original keyframes. Now we can easy ease all of the keyframes. Then in the graph editor, we just need to make sure we have that checkbox selected for all the keyframes. And now we can just lift them all up and adjust the easing like before without the need to mess around with roving keyframes. And with this setup, you can even use the value graph to get your animation just right. And that's it for this tutorial. Let me know in the comments what opened your eyes or turned you on to new possibilities. Take it easy ease and remember to subscribe for more Motion XP.